Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you guys doing? Many of you would have known that in the past I have made a refutational, or actually a series of refutational videos against uh, one Patrick Be Pet David, an individual who's notorious in social media and has his own podcast where he has various guests. Now, uh, this particular person has actually changed his mind on some key issues, and I wanted to bring this to the fore. And give him credit for that, actually, because a lot of people will find it difficult to do this. Let's take a look at some before and after clips, wherein before he would, in my characterization at least, um, hyper-generalize in a low-resolution way the status of Muslim terrorists or terrorism in Islam, or terrorism in Muslims, and then afterwards he corrects himself. Let's take a look at the before and the after. In a Muslim religion, as much as people in America want to make it, it's a very peaceful thing. You've heard Bill Maher say this before, What Bill says most Muslims are not terrorists. But Mo Bill Maher also says most terrorists are Muslim. Muslims, right? Well, he's not wrong. First thing we think about is also Muslim extremists. I mean, every Muslim is a Muslim extremist, which is not. It's a smaller sect of uh, the majority. So recently, he's had another guest where he was talking uh, about Islam again. And he asked a very pertinent question. To which, in my opinion, he received an unsatisfactory reply from his guest. Let's take a look at the question that he asked. What are they doing that their messaging is more attractive for NBA players, football players, Hollywood? Some sure, people yeah. are starting to say, well, I'm, I'm kind of going to lean towards this than Christianity today. Yeah. So as you can see, he's asking, what is it their messaging? Okay, now, first and foremost, is, is I think what's happening here whether it's intentional or unintentional, there is a kind of equivocation going on between Islam as a religion, okay, and the Muslim people, or Islam as a civilization. These are three different things or usages of the word Islam. Historians, for example, when they use the word Islam, they talk about Islam as a civilization, okay? But then Muslims are the practitioners of Islam. What are they doing? their messaging it's not really that muslims have a messaging or a pr campaign or that we're all coming together and saying this is what we're going to say it's just that there is a simple message of islam and that is to believe in one god to believe that there's only one god worthy of worship if you want to juxtapose this or compare this or contrast this with christianity then clearly the main difference here is that we don't believe jesus is god or the son of god we don't believe in the Trinity. These are the main theological differences between Islam and Christianity in a nutshell. But of course, there are many other things as well, which one can research. We've had lots of discussions about on this very channel. Suffice it for me to say that the theological messaging is very different relating to the status of God. We believe in one God worthy of worship. Christians believe that there are three persons of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you look at the data, why people convert to Islam, this is one of the most oft-repeated, off-cited reasons why people do so. And then, of course, there are these other things, the social norms, the moral code. There are the, you know, very clear hudud or lines, red lines. Hudud means boundaries that Allah, God, has set for us, which people find attractive and appealing because it gives them a sense of purpose and of course purpose itself is something which islam aims to give but having said this now i think the the guest he missed the boat when he was answering the question he said that islam provides strong patriarchal uh, response to say feminism but if this was the case if this is the main reason why people convert to islam then why not convert to orthodox judaism um, Orthodox Judaism has very many similar laws when it comes to the family and traditional nuclear homes and so on. So why not Orthodox Judaism? That is because there are key differences between Islam, which is an evangelizing, proselytizing religion, a cosmopolitan religion, and Judaism, which isn't any of those things in any of the same way that Islam is. Let's take a look at another thing now, another segment, which I found quite problematic, let's say, with what Patrick Bet David uh, has stated about the media in Islam. But at the same time, 
the media will defend Muslim, well, but that, the media will not the defend Christianity. Why, yes. the, the sports teams will say, hey, you have to be a little bit more understanding about the Muslim religion, but Christianity, they Correct. can get shots. So on the point of media representation of Muslims, I think it's completely problematic. And Zishan from Smarten Jan has made a video in his segment. He talked about uh, Georgia State University has actually put a study about media representation uh, of Muslims and how it's actually on the whole quite negative. Uh, and that is why many of the maybe misconceptions that he initially had before he changed his mind were were present in the first place because of negative media representation. But the issue of sports is even more unusual. Now, I know he made a very specific point about teams and so on. Maybe he's talking about NFL teams or NBA teams in the American context. But it's unusual, but not least because if you look at the main kind of uh, institutions, sports institutions and organizations, FIFA, the Olympics, and so on, I would po I would posit, I would submit that actually almost all of them are disfavorable to Muslim nations, Muslim countries, Muslim teams. How so? For example, look at the Olympics. It's divided into the Summer Olympics and then you've got the Winter Olympics. The Winter Olympics in and of itself excludes the majority of Muslim countries because of the fact that most of those countries are not even in a climate where you could do things like skiing and so on. So it's already exclusionary. Uh, to the majority of the Muslim world, 60 countries are Muslim majority. And then once again, look at FIFA. The majority of World Cups, for example, of the ones that have actually been hosted, were hosted in, in Western nations or Latin America. I mean, it's, it's been, for the most part, Europe or Latin America. And the home field advantage is very real, as we've seen Qatar recently, which is a Muslim country, the first time a Middle Eastern country, and I think the first time a Muslim country is ever, you know, hosted a World Cup, and you saw completely different results with Morocco, a Muslim country, reaching the semi-finals. So the point is, this wasn't the case of all the World Cups that happened. You only find um, a few of them which favor the Muslim interest. So you've got the Olympics, you've got the FIFA World Cup, which are the two biggest tournaments in sports, uh, and are controlled by American uh, businessmen and so on, or European businessmen for the most part. That's one aspect. And then you've got in popular American culture, which you'll be very familiar with. I remember growing up and seeing a character on the WWE, uh, the World Wrestling Organization, called Muhammad Hassan. And this was a particular wrestler who, when he came out, played the part of a terrorist, actually. And there was actually one segment where when he came out, uh, many of you will have remembered, in WWE... Uh, he came with terrorists and so on, so much so that the television station had to ban this character from appearing ever again. It was a scandalous event. So post 9-11, I would argue, in sports uh, and in general, look at the Qatar uh, situation where you had all of these people, uh, you know, all these teams coming and talking about Gary Lineker and all these pundits from across the world attacking Qatar, trying to get them... Uh, to be undermined in some way. So the, the argument is not really there, I have to say, Patrick. I, I, I'm not following the argument that you're making here uh, in terms of sports and representation of Islam and Islam being represented. However, I will agree with the guest when he said that Christianity and Christian figures were also being depicted in a backward manner. And that is, of course, after 1960s, and the guest was correct here in saying that there was now a shift towards individualism and social liberalism, something I cover in a small book that you can get for free called The Scientific Deceptions of the New Atheists. But having said this, I think it's good that Patrick is now moving in the trajectory of understanding the other side. I hope that trajectory continues. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.